What if some of the components of sunlight are actually the most potent anti-inflammatories that we have access to? I mean, it's almost like I'd get in trouble for talking about this this day and age, but the stuff is real. I mean, here's how red light, near-infrared light, blue light, UVB light, all these things independent and in tandem can help reduce chronic inflammation, but also have huge impacts on endorphins and even nitric oxide, which is wild. And there's some crazy stuff going on with our skin that we're seeing now, where we actually have these compounds in our skin that when they get acted upon by UVB light, actually change our entire chemistry. It's wild. So I'm gonna start with the red and near infrared range first. So in terms of nanometers, that's like, 620 to 700 nanometers for red light, and usually like 700-ish to like a thousand plus for near infrared. So they hit slightly different, but these are lights that can penetrate deep into the tissue. They can actually penetrate all the way into the bone. It sounds really out there, but light can penetrate and light that is at a specific nanometer wavelength can penetrate deep. And it's not like the light is magically curing anything. It's more about how the light impacts something called cytochrome C oxidase or COX, which is complex four within the mitochondria. So the light, because it's such a specific nanometer wavelength, it gets all the way through even all the way to our bone, but it penetrates the tissue and it can get into the mitochondria itself. And it actually activates portions of the mitochondria that are involved in energy manufacturing. For example, there was a study published in the journal Investigative Dermatology, which was pretty interesting because it took a look at how red light and near infrared light specifically affected polarization of what are called M2 macrophages. Essentially, what this means is that red light had this wild effect on these immune cells. But what does that have to do with anything? Well, because the red light and the near infrared light were affecting the expression or the creation of what is called citrate synthase, it was able to modulate the immune response so that there wasn't this hyperactive inflammation, right? The immune system and inflammation go hand in hand. We always think immune system means getting sick. Okay, the immune system is always working, whether we're recovering from a workout, things like that. So being able to actually polarize M2 macrophages to the point where the immune response is a little more directed the way it's supposed to be versus widespread and chronic is pretty powerful. Now they even tested this with rodent models and they saw that there was a reduction in localized inflammation when they tested on rodents. So they were able to use red and near infrared light to basically modulate inflammation at a localized level. Now, of course, there's going to be red light and near infrared light to a certain degree with the sunlight, but that's usually when it's early in the morning, okay? So to optimize for this, you wanna get it in the morning. Now, the nice thing is you can use red light or near infrared light in more localized forms because they make these devices now. So you can actually use it literally over your fat tissue or your muscle tissue or your actual bone or joint and you can have an effect on your mitochondria, which we'll talk a little bit more about. If you look at the image that's on the screen right now, it's a little bit of a complex looking image at first, but it activates cytochrome C oxidase. Okay, this is a really important part of the mitochondria. Because this part gets activated, you're gonna increase your ATP production. So you're actually producing more energy in that mitochondria, out of that mitochondria. Now, as a result, you also increase reactive oxygen species, but that's okay to a certain degree because you're going to clear that. And sometimes actually increasing reactive oxygen species increases your body's natural antioxidants to deal with that, which is exactly what you need for an immune response or just, you know, for good healthy life in general. What's particularly interesting though, is it helps move nitric oxide out of the heme center. So nitric oxide gets moved, which allows for better mitochondrial respiration which in very human terms, once again, just means the ability for the mitochondria to go through its cycle of taking fuel, electrons, and turning it into energy, okay? Now, in order to take those electrons and turn them into energy, you need to have a functioning cytochrome C oxidase or complex four within the mitochondria. So by activating that with light, you're making it so that the final end stage, you're able to produce more energy out of the mitochondria. This is good for fat loss, it's good for healing, it's good for flat out energy. But now we talk more about how the sun plays a role, okay? Because the sun intervenes here because the sun has blue light, certain amounts of it. We think of blue light as like the screens on our phones or computers, but the sun has blue light. It's a lot of blue light, okay? But it also has UVB, which gets such a bad rap. UVB, yeah, it can damage your skin. It can damage your eyes. 
but it's also one of the most powerful things that we have access to. There was a study published in Human Drugs and Dermatology, and in this case, they were using uh, keratinocytes, human cells. But hear me out, there's a human study that's coming up, okay? And what they did is they took these human cells and they induced inflammation within them, and they exposed these cells then to blue light and UVB light like you'd get from the sun. There was about a 75 to 82% reduction in interleukin-1, a primary inflammatory driver, with just blue light. Okay, when you added the UVB light on top of that, like what you'd get in the sun, it went closer to 95% reduction in this primary inflammatory cytokine. This explains why like, getting out in the sun just makes us feel better. It's like my joints feel better. It's, it's not just the fact that it's warmer out and my joints are lubricated. I actually feel better in the sun, like something changes. This makes sense. But now we get into the more human stuff, okay? There was a study published in Free Radical Biology and Medicine, okay? And this took a look at in vitro and in vivo human models. They found that 453 nanometer blue light, but along with UVB light, ended up increasing nitric oxide levels, not just in the keratinocytes, but in the human models themselves. What this study found is that this nitric oxide was quote unquote non enzymatically generated. And what that meant is within the study, they found that we actually store these nitrogen-based compounds in our skin. We store them. And then when the sun hits them, the UVB light, it sort of shakes them up a little bit. It's like putting protein powder in a shaker cup and shaking it. And all of a sudden, your skin has now created these things like nitric oxide. The nitric oxide then increases blood flow, which does a lot of things, okay? It can improve capillary density, it can improve nutrient absorption and delivery, it can have a huge effect on the immune system, all in all, more cerebral blood flow. So it's not just like the warmth of the sun is dilating your blood vessels, you're literally getting more nitric oxide, which is helping you just feel better and deliver things better. The next thing I wanna get into is probably the most crazy cool thing. It's the impact on hunger and endorphins, and that's particularly wild. But I want to pause and talk about how, like, how much sun you should be getting. You should probably be dosing your sunlight, okay? So the best time to get the red or the near infrared is early morning. It's also good to get blue light in the morning, like before 10.30 a.m. So if you get closer to like 10, 10.30, you're going to start tilting a little more blue and starting to get adequate amounts of UVB. Obviously, the highest UVB when the sun is at a particular range in the sky, when it's probably most hot and uncomfortable and you risk getting burned. And that just has to do with like the atmosphere, like when the sun actually, you know, how many layers of atmosphere essentially it's penetrating through, which is beyond my pay grade. That's not my world of science. But the thing is, is that it's fascinating and yeah, you can get more UVB, but you want to dose it appropriately. I put a link down below for a brand that I recommend too. It's called Mitolux. They're the only vitamin D sun lamp that I'm aware of that leverages this technology for different nanometer wavelengths entirely. Really cool, really cool product. Okay, it's a vitamin D UVB red light, near infrared, and even gamma wave light. So you put it on your desk. If you can't get adequate vitamin D or you can't get out in the sun, it is sunlight in a light like that you can have on your desk. So much so that you should probably wear sunglasses and you shouldn't be using it for long periods of time. There's seven different wavelengths that you can mess around with on this thing. It's highly programmable. Okay, and they're using UVB. You can also turn the UVB off. It's got a fireplace mode, so you can just have red and near infrared. You can even have it flicker, so it has kind of a nice effect. It has a gamma setting, which is gonna make it a little bit better for cognitive function. It really is just a really interesting light. And it's one of those that can actually increase vitamin D levels because you're getting the true UVB. So again, you wanna dose it appropriately. They have different models. They have a base model. They have an elevated model. Really cool company. And that link down below, if you use code THOMAS15, gets you 15% off as well. Definitely recommend that you check them out. It's a great way to dose it. And if you can't do that, you can still use the sunlight, but it depends on where you live, right? It can be really hard. Let's talk about these endorphins for a second because you could theoretically get that same impact with a light or outside with the endorphins. Really cool. This study also published in Free Radical Biology and Medicine was really interesting because it took a look at, again, in vitro and in vivo, okay, living models, all right? It looked at how UVB light can impact the endocannabinoid system and also even opioid receptors within our brain. It's really wild. They found that essentially what's going on is UVB light increases endorphins, okay? And these endorphins then have 
like a mood stimulating effect. So it's not just like the serotonin effect of the sun. There's a literal endorphin rush that comes from the actual UVB hitting our skin. It's not just our eyes. It's when it happens in the UVB and the certain lights hit our skin. And then it shakes things up with the nitric oxide, but it also has an effect on the endocannabinoid system. And then downstream, it can impact what are called CB2 receptors, which is exactly one of the avenues that we try to modulate inflammation through different supplements. So when you get UVB light in, it then impacts what's called POMC. When you impact POMC, you have an increase in endorphins, like things like andandamide, things like that. And then you actually downstream target the opioid receptor. So you're getting almost euphoric from the sun. But then there's obviously the anti-inflammatory aspect that comes with that too. So really powerful. But then also you're getting an appetite suppressing effect. You're literally getting an endorphin rush that makes you feel good and suppresses your appetite. Now, if we look at another study published in the journal Immunology, we find that UVB light actually directly blocks the translocation of nuclear factor kappa B, which is complicated science for basically saying it blocks the inflammation plug from plugging into the socket, all right? So there really is a profound anti-inflammatory effect. But then there were some studies that took a look at vitamin D's relationship here too. This was published in the Journal of Applied Science. It found that the sunlight obviously increases vitamin D, hydroxyvitamin D, binds to the vitamin D receptor, which then decreases the activity of what's called the inflammasome, which is essentially little like search parties that go out and cause inflammation for different reasons. Sometimes reasons that are justified, sometimes reasons that are not, like in the case of chronic inflammation. So again, it comes back to, well, how do we use sunlight to our advantage? Well, the cool thing is the endocannabinoid effect as far as like appetite is concerned and everything like that, that can happen quick. We're talking immediate sunlight exposure, like just enough to get your skin warm and have the sun hit your actual skin. We're talking five to 10 minutes and you can have a huge difference in that feeling of euphoria. And also you're getting the serotonin effect too, because sunlight's definitely gonna impact that. We've all heard of seasonal affective disorder. It's not just a vitamin D thing, it's also a serotonin thing and it's very real. Not to mention you're becoming more efficient at utilizing energy because your mitochondria is doing better because cytochrome C oxidase is activated more. Bottom line is, you can dose your sunlight. You get that red light, that near infrared in the morning. You get that light blue light in the early to mid morning, more like the mid morning. You get the UVB at the midday. So taking frequent breaks throughout the day to go out and get sunlight in different wavelengths would be really awesome. Also, we have technology now like Mitolux, like I mentioned, that makes it easier on the days that you can't. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.